Today, I would be talking about autosclerosis. Myself, Dr. Vivek Shashindran, consultant ENT head and neck surgeon. Well, autosclerosis is a condition which affects the middle ear. Now, the primary complaint that the patient presents to you would be with hearing loss. This can affect one ear or it could affect both the ears. It's more commonly seen in females when compared to males. And this hearing loss is usually progressive in nature. So as time progresses, the hearing worsens. Now the earliest sign of hearing loss would be appreciated somewhere between 20 to 30 years of age. And classically it progresses over a period of time. There is classical worsening of the hearing during pregnancy. So this is something that is seen with autosclerosis. Now patients can also have other associated symptoms like tinnitus which is abnormal ringing sensation in the ear. Now what exactly is the cause or what exactly is the pathogenesis we still don't understand. But what happens in a patient with autosclerosis is that the tiniest bone in the human body which we refer to as a stapes, it tends to get fixed over a period of time. So in a normal individual, when you hear sound, the vibrations of the tympanic membrane or the eardrum, they are carried to the tiny bones in the middle ear. And as a result of which, these bones also tend to move or vibrate. However, in autosclerosis, there is an abnormal fixation of the stapes, which is the smallest bone. And as a result of which, the sound will not get transmitted beyond this fixation. And this is what results in hearing loss. Now this can affect more than one member of a family. So there is a genetic predisposition. It can be hereditary. So that is something that we specifically ask for when we suspect a case of autosclerosis. Now most of the patients tend to ignore the hearing loss in the early stages. It's only when the disease has kind of progressed that they figure out that it is kind of difficult for them to carry out normal day-to-day -day conversations and that is when they seek medical help. Now routine clinical examination will not reveal anything significant. However, the diagnosis can be suspected with a audiological test that is a pure tone audiogram and a tympanogram. So these tests classically would show what we call as a conductive hearing loss. Now, a CT scan of the ear can be done to rule out any other associated problems within the middle ear. And in most of the cases, the CT scans show normal anatomy. And in a small percentage of patients, you can actually pick up this earlier signs of autosclerosis. That is this abnormal uh, deposition of what we call as autospongiotic changes. So in, in a very small percentage of patients, you can, the CT scan can actually clinch a diagnosis of autosclerosis. However, a normal CT scan would not rule out a autosclerosis. Now, when it comes to treatment options, the primary treatment modality is stepidotomy. So, stepidotomy is a procedure where we explore the middle ear, we kind of move around each and every ossicle, that is the three tiny bones in the middle ear, these are kind of manipulated to see if they are mobile and that is how we kind of confirm the fixity of the stapes bone on table that is in the operation theater and once it is confirmed what we do is we can actually replace the stapes with a piston so this is one of the finest ear surgeries so just imagine you are operating on the smallest bone in the human body so the size of this bone is approximately 3.25 millimeter into 1.75 millimeter. So it requires a lot of precision, it requires a lot of finesse and these surgeries are usually carried out with the help of microscope or endoscope which actually gives us magnification. Now in 95% of the scenarios we get a fairly good hearing outcome. And if these cases are being done under local anesthesia, obviously you can appreciate this hearing gain on table itself by talking to the patient. Now the second option for autosclerosis is 
hearing aids. Now, these are generally reserved for patients who have previously undergone surgery, have poor results, failed surgeries, or that subset of patients who really are not too keen on a surgical procedure. However, stepidotomy still continues to be the primary modality of treatment for patients with autosclerosis. Thank you.